In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I replace the back glass on this iPhone. This is an iPhone 11. If you haven't already checked out the video on how to actually set up and use the LaserPod 2.0, check that out. This is the phone that I demonstrated in that video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the tips and tricks that I use to remove and replace the back glass to get a nice clean finish and bring this phone back to like new condition. If there are any tips and tricks that you have that I don't mention in this video, leave them in the comments below. We really appreciate it. Now I'm gonna be going over the different tools that I use for the back glass removal. You need to have a pair of tweezers that you've designated for this type of repair as the tips will definitely get deformed and damaged. I like having one of these razor blades. It comes in a 10 pack, it's truly really useful. A good old scraping tool. This uh, back glass breaking tool and these really flexible pry tools. Now a couple things before we get started. The border, there is a thin bezel around the border of these phones that can get easily damaged by pry tools. And in order to have a nice clean finish, we wanna make sure we don't damage that bezel as we pry the glass up. The back glass breaking tool has a hardened tip. You can adjust the amount of force it applies by unscrewing the back of this. The further you unscrew it, obviously not all the way, the lighter the punch will be. And the only place I recommend using the braking tool is around the cameras. If you use it here, you'll either damage the motherboard or the battery because that punch, that force will travel through the glass, through the thin frame and into whatever lies behind it. Whereas this, this area is nice thick and has a sturdy frame uh, and uh, is is really difficult otherwise to, to get the glass out anyway. And so that's where I use the glass breaker and I rarely use it anywhere else because it tends to just cause more issues. I'm on the lightest I could possibly go and I'm just gonna work my way around it and eventually you'll see cracks actually starting to form. You can finally see a crack happening there. I'm basically going to work my way around. And we're going to crack up the glass as much as we can around this area. Sometimes you just need to give it a quick shake and if it locks up. Like this. And it'll unlock. Now we just need to carefully pick at the back glass wherever it will want to come up. We'll want to make sure we don't damage the microphone mesh here. And I would definitely recommend wearing some safety glasses at this point because glass might go flying everywhere. Just be careful whenever you're inserting tools into the gaps so that you're not grabbing anything that's important. Now I've had enough people ask when do we use the, gra the glass breaker? And I recommend not using it until after you've, r you've run the laser machine. Because if you run it before that, what happens is these little cracks refract the light, the laser, they refract the laser and it won't penetrate to the paint and the adhesive as well. So the, the less cracks, the better. You also want to make sure the microphone stays down and you don't tear at it. Carefully remove all the glass around the microphone and then we can work our way around the lenses. Now I like to find a way in and under bezel there around the lens and I'll work my way around and remove all the loose shards that decide they want to finally come out from under that ledge and a few extra punches with the glass breaker definitely help you along the way eventually you'll find your way in and once you have it in things start to just kind of fall out it's just getting it started that can sometimes be a little tricky once you find your in just keep working around. Sometimes there will be glass shards that like to hide under here, under the ledge. You need to make sure you go all the way around each one. Get all of those out. See what I mean by tweezers? Ones you don't care about. You're going to bend them here and there. Just break them in. Just breaking them in to become a better tool. Before long, you'll designate one of these sides because it'll get shorter for the bigger things and the, the other side for the smaller one. I like to use the prying tool do something like this. You just kind of wiggle it back and forth. It'll kind of just shatter the glass as you move along. All right, once we've kind of scraped and picked out at the majority of the glass, 
There's some adhesive with some remnants of glass that we need to get rid of there. But well, now let's turn our attention to the rest of the glass. Some of this may simply just fall out. For those of you that have done back glass repairs before, 90% of the back glass work is done around the lenses. The rest of it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, as the majority of it just wants to fall right off. You'll find sections of glass that are really thin along that bezel that we want to try not to damage. The laser pod does a really good job at getting really close to that border without burning it due to the fact that we've redesigned our, our uh, stencils to get nice and close up against that, that bezel without getting too close to simply burn it. And that's where I like to use these tools. Extremely flexible, get in there without damaging the, the bezel. Come in from the inside, push it under, and it'll just fall all right out. And then here on the border, I can actually push down that pry tool because it's so thin and get in between that bezel and the glass. And we can pry it up. And once I've got enough of a space, I start to push it in without damaging that bezel. Now we do have the external charging pad back here that is adhered somewhat to the back glass and so we need to remove that. So you can use a little bit of heat, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, whatever, you, whatever you'd like, or you can just pry really slowly. You just need to make sure it doesn't slip through and get pulled onto this side of the frame. To make things just a little simpler, I will almost break my roll, my rule of not cracking anywhere. And I'm gonna go right here on the kind of the edge and we'll give it one punch there. I'm close enough to the edge that I'm not gonna damage the board or the battery, you know, depending on which side I'm on. But now I've got these cracks that'll allow me to pry up and get under, or get on the right side of the external charging pad, the NFC. Add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol there, and we'll carefully insert tool here and pry on this glass and send that piece of glass across the room. Same goes here. I'm gonna put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on that crack there. And as I pry on this, should suck some of that alcohol down inside the crack. Just like that. And then it'll come right up for me. Now that I know where I am, I can slide in the pry tool here and we can push it all the way through let's pop this piece that little metallic sticker there if, if you're encountering resistance it's because there might be a little bit of adhesive along the uh, the border there where the laser doesn't hit to be safe now i'm just going to pull on this these pry tools are pretty inexpensive and so you might bend it and then but going through one couple bucks. I always get them in bulk. And what's nice is when it breaks like that, you get that nice clean edge against the bezel. All right, got a new pry tool here and we'll slide it in. Follow that edge around the NFC on both sides. You can actually see the tool through the somewhat transparent glass now. Now I should be able to, now that I've cleared it, should just be able to pry up and remove these big, some of these bigger shards. There's maybe a little bit of glue holding on down here in a couple places. Get that piece out of there. Uh, it looks like some of the rest wants to kind of come with it. Oh, there we go. Now let's see if we can pop this last piece out as well. Yeah, I can feel it's holding on with some adhesive down here at the bottom. You can actually see where it's holding on to with the glare of the light. Looks like there's some adhesive probably right there where it doesn't didn't burn. Prying tension on it and let's see if we can pop it off. It'll probably just shatter. Now at this point you could throw a little bit of heat, a heat gun on that area. Probably loosen up that adhesive enough to get it off, but yeah, just shattered. That's fine. Glasses, safety glasses. You can kind of just see though that this is gonna just fall out, fall into pieces now. 
It'll allow the tool to slide in a little bit better on top of this antenna without damaging it. And then I should be able to just pry that last shard of glass out of there without breaking it this time. And there it goes. Now what I like to do at this point is I'm going to switch this over to number three so we can get a nice quick burn on it. We'll put our phone back into the mold. Put it inside, close the door, turn the machine on, and push start. We'll let that run for about six minutes, and I'll show you what happens next. One of the downsides to this repair is how messy it makes your workspace. And this is what we're left with. You can see I can basically just slide a blade through and carefully remove all of the, the paint that's ready to come up. And if you're careful, you can slide the pry tool up the edge and remove all of the border, the old border adhesive. We're basically just trying to get down as close as we can to the frame now. now you don't want to cut that bezel, but if you get right up next to it, you'll be able to run this blade like a chisel right up the side. So I've run it through one more time. Now I should be able to carefully scrape off any of the remaining adhesive. It should want to just, for the majority of the, of the way, just want to peel up on its own. Yeah, I'm about to fade away. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so... And we can end up with something like this. There's no more, nothing on the edges. Got a really nice border and bezel. No more glass, adhesive, anything. And it's ready to be cleaned on the edges. I'll take a clean room wipe and some isopropyl alcohol. And we're gonna clean up the edge really good and we're gonna get all that black stuff out of there. And when we do that, it'll create a, a less noticeable edge between the glass and the frame. If you leave that black burnt uh, soot in there, that char will uh, be more noticeable. And we'll give it a nice good cleaning all around the edges. There we go. I'm going to be using some of our clear cold press adhesive with a really fine tip nozzle. So we've got our no logoed large camera hole red 11 back glass. It'll slide right over. It's a snug fit around the microphone and the flash there. But you can see we're gonna have a nice solid fit up. Now that I've verified everything's gonna go well on this end, we'll take that off carefully and apply our adhesive. Alright. Carefully squeeze out some adhesive around where the cameras are gonna go. And what I like to do is I like to basically just follow kind of the way that Apple did this and I'll just follow the adhesive trail that Apple left behind. Doesn't have to be perfect, but. And then for the fun part, let's put a nice solid bead all the way around the edge. Alright, we'll take our back glass. Let's stick it over and gently push it on the microphone and the flash to fall through squeeze the rest on firmly now i'm going to take a clamp here right here you get a really nice finish there on that edge and clamp here at the bottom make sure everything's nice and lined up and then we'll clamp it in a few more spots and that should do it the last thing I'm going to do is take a clean room wipe with some isopropyl alcohol. Go around the border, just make sure any adhesive that's squeezed out is gone. So we have that nice clean finish with a solid installation of the back glass.
You can see how clean and crisp that border is. Looks brand new. So as you've just seen, replacing the back glass on an iPhone isn't that hard if you have the right tools. So like and subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment below if there's something that you'd like us to make a video on. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.